When you go out there, go out and lift people up two hands at a time. And sometimes you may just have to use your foot. Hello from Podcast Movement. Welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast presented by Hippo Direct. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur or innovator every single Wednesday morning who's unleashing creativity to grow their business. I'm your host, Max Brandstetter, digital marketing due to HippoDirect, and you can reach me at max at hippodirect.com for any help with podcasting or digital marketing. This is episode number 56, and today's guest is Lisa Askelis. She's known as the inventress, and with incredibly good reason. She's invented or helped invent over 500 products, and her clients include Steve Harvey, Dion Warwick, Tyrese Gibson, and more. She's been featured in Forbes and QVC, and she's even friendly with the sharks from Shark Tank. Stay tuned towards the end of the episode for a special scheduling update for the next couple weeks. But first, it's time to invent. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, we are here with the inventress, the one and only Lisa Askelis. She is the inventress. She is behind Inventing A to Z, also AOE, the amazing conference, and much, much more. Lisa, how are you doing today? And thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. And how are you? Doing fantastic. Awesome. Doing fantastic as well. So before we get into it, I want to shout out our mutual buddy, Kevin Lane, who he could not speak enough about you when he was on our podcast, so his podcast episode, but the man behind Create a Castle And I know you have been incredibly helpful with him, helping him develop his invention, getting him on QVC and much, much more. So shout out, Kevin. Yes, Kevin is the man. He is such a go-getter. He's determined to succeed. I talk about that type of determination that he has. I wish I could bottle it in all of my clients and inventors. (laughs) So yes, Kevin (laughs) developed his own product, Creative Castle, and um, I pitched it to QVC, but I have to back up. He was one of the winners at my two-minute elevator pitch for my AOE conference last year. No way. Less than one year ago, okay? So I have a two-minute elevator pitch uh, at my AOE conference every year. I have somebody from Shark Tank who comes and just a few judges, and uh, Kevin was the winner. And so as being a winner, you get my services for free. My services include me helping you take your product from concept to fruition, um, his product was already developed, so I pitched his product to QVC, and he landed it. So three times on air at QVC Television is phenomenal. Yeah, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And so he really got his start. So that explains why he's so thankful for you, and on the record too with podcast episodes. So he must have had a hell of a pitch there in his two minutes there. But let's get to you, and let's get to inventing. Sure. So, well, first of all, do you have any idea? Have you ever put a number on the account on the number of products that you've invented or help people invent? Do you have a ballpark range? I don't. I'm going to say it's got to be close to, I don't know, 500. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slacker, right? Yeah, I gee, what have you been doing say, with your I have time? To, I have to really, no one's ever asked me that question before. I mean, really? I invented something this morning. I call them mental inventions. Okay, yeah. So they're inventions like that you don't necessarily move forward with because some are not financially feasible. Mm-hmm. You have to, you know, kind of flesh out finances and figure out, you know, what demographic is going to buy this product. Is it just for you? Is it just an idea, something that you're going to use? If so, make a prototype and use it for yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that I've done too. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 500 inventions. So like, geez, what are you doing with your time? I know. But, uh, <laughs> so Slack and you, laying around. Yeah, seriously. Beach. You, I know you started inventing products at an early age. Mm-hmm. Can you give us an example of something that you did as a child or you, when you started coming up with these solutions? Sure. So, I mean, my, um, I guess the, the greatest memory of one of my inventions looking back and saying, wow, is that actually an invention? I, I grew up in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And when you grow up in Brooklyn, you're in, when I grew up, you played outside. There was no hanging inside and playing computer games or anything that, like that. We went outside. We were either playing handball or basketball or tennis and, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I had no time to tie my shoes. <laughs> so I invented this lace that stuck together, not even knowing I was actually inventing something. I just had to stop them from, from falling out. 
And so I made this kind of mod podge mixture, which created a stiffness in my lace, in my laces. So that was the first memory when I started saying, well, you know what? I, this must be an invention. This has to be an invention, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, let that go and just did other things, was always modifying and readjusting things in my house. And my mother and father were probably losing it and just allowed me to like be free to do what I was doing. I don't yeah. know how they dealt with it, but well, they did. Probably, probably a good thing they did. They did. And um, I just that's what I did. I just remodified everything. Things that didn't work for me, I made, mm -hmm. I created them to work for me. Um, yeah. So you had a knack then from an early age of finding the pain points in mm -hmm. different objects, finding the pain points, finding where you could improve something. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're a child and you don't look an age over 21. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> of course. Thanks, um, Dove. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. <laughs> but, shout out to but, Dove. The, but that was when you were a child. And mm -hmm. then as. You go through your teen years and you get into your professional career. You're inventing, you're inventing. And then at a certain point, it transitioned to helping others invent mm -hmm. and helping and, and becoming the inventress and helping others launch their products and get on QVC and Shark Tank and all these other things. So when did you – what was the moment when you said, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it was after my uh, my first product that actually launched in stores, retail stores, was a, a breastfeeding cape, a nursing cape. Mm -hmm. I was very embarrassed to nurse my children in public and they got to eat, right? So mm -hmm. I designed here, right? this thing. I designed <laughs> this cape uh, so that I could nurse – my children privately in public and I had it manufactured and stores were actually purchasing it, you know, cause you never think, you know, that you're, you have yeah. good ideas, but is somebody else going to purchase your product? And that's exactly what happened. So that was the real, um, ignite that really ignited me to sell, like create my other ideas. Uh, after that, when I put a product called the bun tie hair accessory on QVC, QVC picked that up. Uh, my daughter was even on air with it. Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> Brit the famous Eric. Brittany, the but for anybody that hasn't listened to the Inventress podcast <laughs> with Lisa, Brittany is uh, the star who's, you know, anybody who meets her and he's asked for her autograph will say that much. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so it was a bun tie and then one after another after another because, of course, you gain not only momentum, but you gain confidence in what you're doing. If people are purchasing these products and now you're making money, mm -hmm. you know, you probably sh should keep it going, keep it moving. So, and I did. So, the next product uh, after that was a... Um, the organizer for wrapping paper called the wrapping store <laughs> wrapping store organizer i created because every time i sat down to wrap a present i lost everything didn't move from my spot lost the tape lost the scissors didn't move i said this is crazy okay so i have to put something together that organizes all of my wrapping paper my gift cards and everything else so design that uh presented that to qvc they made a few mod modifications and um Sold that, sold that out on QEC, then my perfect pockets organizer, and then the beat just goes on and on and on. Yeah. It's got to be hard for you to remember all the different inventions. I mean, 500, it's like... Well, they're you know. not just mine. Right. So my, my men, <laughs> yes, no, I have a notebook for but mine. But you have like I mean, your tree of inventions, but a yes, family so tree. My tree of inventions, and I have other people who I help to invent. Right. So overall, over the last, you know, 38 years, mm -hmm. yes, it's been. And I have to look back. I have about 50 on QEC now. 50. 50? 50 active online uh, on their dot oh com between QVC, HSN, Quite uh, the... and now Evine Live. So your resume is not too shabby then. So you're clearly an expert in the inventing space, in the idea space, and product space. What tips do you have for anybody that has an idea to turn that into an actual product and eventually for some for many people a business what's what's some key things that you can share with us i would say baby steps baby steps not running directly to a invention company with an idea develop a non-disclosure agreement number one once you have an nda a non-disclosure agreement which is a privacy document which if you're showing anybody your information um your idea they're signing to it that they're not going to share with anybody else. Yeah. So a non-disclosure agreement is really important. You could look that up online, NDA. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing would be write down all of your information and keep it in a safe place that only you can see it, only you are reading it in the beginning. Uh, just document everything about it and ask yourself if it makes sense to sell it to you know the general public. You know what I mean? Take a look at some prices. Take a look online to see if anything like the product exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do your due diligence there. I would not say run and patent a product right away. 
That's the first mistake people make. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not saying don't patent, but don't run to get a patent yeah. on something that yeah. you just thought of. And why is that? Nine times out of ten, the idea is going to change. It's going to change. Probably. Okay, you're going to start yeah. making modifications. If you get a patent, so the first idea you came up with has to be reconfigured. Mm-hmm. Guess what? That's a new patent. Mm. So it's, it's like every, new, right, because it's, it's every specific patent. detail, right? Wow. And one of the things that I know you have a lot of experience in, in that is a, a high desire for a lot of inventors, is getting that massive exposure that you can get from places like QBC and Shark Tank and other selling networks there. Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for anybody that is applying to get there? Or how, how does someone, a normal everyday person, ultimately get their product on TV or mm-hmm. in such a wide distribution platform? You have to have all of your ducks in a row. You can't go out with a prototype. You can't go out with no business information. You have to have um, you have to have a business, not a, necessarily a business plan. Mm-hmm. I'm not all about that yet. That's later on. Down the <laughs> right. So have a prototype, but have your manufacturing strategy in place also. Um, and I'm sk- skipping a whole lot because it's not just about developing a product and manufacturing it. It's having everything together. Having when you watch Shark Tank, okay. When you take a look at Shark yeah. Tank, yeah. How do you know I watch people? Shark Tank? When people go on Shark Tank, they look so buttoned up and together Mm -hmm. because they are they may not have full-on manufacturing in place but they've done their due diligence they know all of the steps necessary to get on that show because they're not going to have you apply if i mean you could apply as much as you want Mm -hmm. if you're not organized and together you're just not you're not ready yeah so you have to be ready it's funny you mentioned that because a previous guest that we had on the show Mm -hmm. was kim cow who was behind it's now called the super fan company, but it was mm-hmm. Zine Pack before that. And her and Brittany, her co-founder, I watched their episode on Shark Tank. And I asked them about the, I asked her, Kim, about the behind the scenes and the planning that went, went into it. And they said, you know, because at the time they were maybe, you know, season four or five, they watched the first three seasons, every single episode, and they made a spreadsheet of these were the questions that were asked the most by the sharks. Mm-hmm. And so there was so much planning that went into it. It just gives you an idea of how much, how buttoned up you need to be and how much rehearsing goes into it. It's not like you're going up there for an impromptu Yeah, you can't pitch. do it. Yeah. And some people think they can. You know, I, I've had people come to me who um, swear that they're ready to develop a product. And I say, all right, do you have all of your finances in place? Because it's not cheap and it's not free. I mean, it's just, can't be. just not. As a matter of fact, I have a client I'm working with now who just did not. I mean, she said, I'm ready. I've been working on this for four mm-hmm. years. And... Now I'm ready to make, I quit my job. I'm really ready to work on this product. So now we're down to the manufacturing stage and it's time to place that order. I said, okay, we need to, you know, send wire to wherever we're, you know, wiring money to. And are you ready? She goes, now they need the money now. So yeah, before you even take the steps to manufacture or create a prototype, you have to understand what your, what your finances are, what you can and can't afford. And I do those consultations. I brief people yeah. on this all the time. You know, I think what happens is I don't think people think it's actually going to happen. You know, so right. many people have tried and, and for years and years and you try to, they've gone to different invention companies. And, and that's why I say, hold on to your hat when you come to me because it's going to happen. It's going to get done so beginning you, to end. You're that confident voice and empowering voice that they need. Which is All they have to do is take the steps to do it. And I give people the steps in order to develop their products from concept to fruition. And I take a look at it and see if it makes any sense to me. And, you know, sometimes I'll even do some tweaks in order to modify the product to make it work. But sometimes people bring products that don't work. Oh, that's the, the horror stories. <laughs> we, we don't need to get into the horror stories sometimes here. They just don't work. Yeah. And then you really on your client side and your networking side i mean you have a client list on your website and it's just blown away by the names there and so i know you've worked and and helped in the past steve harvey Deanne warwick you've been close with tyrese gibson as mm-hmm. well there's i know you have a video of you with all the sharks from shark tank how did you first get into contact with all this all these amazing people and and start working with them wow so um geez Dion warwick was 20 years ago uh, and it, the story is way too long right now for, for this topic. But I'll we do get, long, We'll do a Spark Notes, Cliff Notes version. Okay, long <laughs> short of it is um, Dion Warwick actually got me into the East Orange School Districts many years ago to teach. Really? Inventing A to Z classes, my Inventing A to Z class. Yeah. 
I went to her with a song because I, I I write some music and poetry and et cetera. And that's that's not the song uh, not not that. to brag. Uh, if, yeah, if we had more not, time, we'd get into a music section. That's not promoting at all. <laughs> um, and it's an old song that she loved. And anyway, she was going to record it, and she said, "You know what, Lisa? You also do inventing. Let's let's stay there." So <laughs> she, <laughs> and I bring this up at every conference that she comes to. Also, <laughs> take so the earplugs out. All the, yeah. <laughs> And she got me into all of the East Orange School Districts. And, uh, you know, she has her own school, mm -hmm. the Dion Warwick Institute uh, in, in Newark, uh, East Orange. And uh, so started teaching there. And after that, started teaching at different universities, Monmouth University, Writer, and the beat went on there. So that's, and I also pitched one of her products to QVC. Yeah. Um, in addition to uh, her, well, Gloria Gaynor, just also product. She has a product idea and invention. And she came to me. And brought her, um, walked her through some steps. Tyrese is an inventor. He's got, not mm -hmm. only is he a musician, he's an inventor. Yeah. And, Renaissance uh, man. <laughs> just word so of what... mouth. I mean, when you're networking and you're in a certain circle and people trust you, you're going you're gonna to meet the right people. Which is, I find the amazing, and we were actually chatting before this about how amazing podcasting can be from a networking standpoint mm -hmm. and how you just really never know or connection and who you meet, what even, you know, a short conversation with somebody can lead to mm -hmm. and who's connected to who and who. And then the more you get in that space and especially for you in the TV and the public space, you really never know what that can lead to. So, right. so that's very cool. That's, I mean, just the amazing people you work with there. And I also want to touch on your conference mm -hmm. and a, your nonprofit AOE. Mm -hmm. So see if I get this right. The okay. Association of Women Inventors and Entrepreneurs. Excellent. Perfect. I've been nailed it. I've been rehearsing that for years before we even met. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for anybody that's not familiar with it, can you give us a little bit of background of why you started it and what's the main thing you guys do today? Sure. So I started AOE because I I speak at a lot of different places, a lot of different conferences, and typically I get very bored. <laughs> so if I'm not mm -hmm. speaking, I'm, I'm I have a pad out. Literally, no disrespect, folks, but it, <laughs> it's they're it, they're kind of very they're slow moving, and you know, I, so I love action, I love momentum, I love movement, I like to grow, I like to learn. So AOE is all about that. It's movement, it's education, it's mm -hmm. a musically inspired conference. Um, I bring in people who are very knowledgeable, obviously, in their own businesses, a lot of women. Uh, this year, we had a panel of men because I wanted to break things up a little bit, shake things up. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really a musically inspired conference. Every person who walks on stage walks on stage to a song that inspires them. Oh, I love to, that. And they have to dance on and stage. And it's their choice, yes. right? So it's a very unique space. It's an educational <laughs> space. And um, so, you know, people talk, they network, we have food, we have Contest, obviously, two-minute elevator pitches. This year, we had a fashion show. So it's an event that just keeps on moving and keeps people networking and wanting to stay and know, understand more about each other. Yeah. Kevin, if I'm correct, didn't Kevin speak at it previously? He, he did. He was one of the speakers this year. So, and the real reason I'm asking, is there a mm -hmm. video somewhere of Kevin dancing on stage? Or I believe is there... there is. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I believe we'll, we'll have to chat later and find that because that's that's pretty good. Yes. Yeah, uh, to, yeah. To throw in his face there. <laughs> so but, our mission statement is, um, you know, I'm all about lifting each other up two hands at a time. And as I say, sometimes you have to use your foot. Uh, in addition to bridging the gap between ambition and success. There's mm -hmm. no reason why there should be a few people out here who are gaining success and momentum in their businesses. And other people are over here who just want to learn and understand how to get over there. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't like to open that up and share. Yeah. We like to share and help other people who have businesses or who want to start businesses and understand the steps in order to become successful. There's no reason why we can't all be successful. And kindness counts. It all comes from being kind, a kind and open heart. Yeah. I just love your vibe overall. There's so much positivity. And Thank you. You're such a, a positive, strong, positive voice for these inventors who, as you mentioned, a lot of them just think it's an idea and they don't realize that stores might actually be interested in this and people might actually be interested in that. So mm -hmm. you, you need that, that voice there. Hey, Wild listeners. Have you been wanting to start a podcast for yourself or your business but didn't know where to start? Or do you have a podcast of your own but you're struggling with the time commitment? I'd love to help. Shoot me an email at max at hippodirect.com with any podcasting questions you have. I'm also happy to jump on a 30-minute call where we can discuss your idea, planning, production, promotion, and other elements of the podcasting world. Let your podcast run wild. On that note about inspiration, so one of the big things we talk about 
in this podcast is inspiration and creativity. So what other ways, you know, when you think of how you stay creative and inspired and come up with these ideas, what do you point to? I mean, is there hobbies? Are there people? Uh, certain things you do in your free time? You know, what what is it? It's living. It's literally living that helps me to create. And I don't sit around saying, today I want to invent something. It just doesn't happen. You don't? It's not like a, you know, no, hacker coffee? It's... You know what, today I'm going to invent something. No, I don't say that at all. I allow myself to mentally invent and write things down on Saturdays when I'm home. Mm. Because as I was driving here, I said to my husband, all right, check out, write this down for me and build it. <laughs> By the time I get home, I want it made. Seriously? So, yeah. Like, you mean prototyping? Yeah. Or, oh my yes. God. <laughs> so in the car, I came up with this thing. I partially came up with it on a flight a couple of weeks ago when I was going to mm-hmm. Vegas. And then the rest of it came to me this morning. And it's two parts. And I said, please make it for me and have it ready by the time I get home. Wow. So this is how I do it. And this is the, the product that I'm thinking of is very, very simple to make. It's basic and everyone needs it. So it's a simple solution. So mm-hmm. to answer your other question is when I'm home for an eight hour day, which is rare, and I'm doing things around my house, whether it's cleaning mm-hmm. up my closet or organizing under my sinks, there's always something that comes to me like, hmm, it would be better if this did this. And I literally write it down, write it down. And some things obviously I move forward on, others I don't. Because as I said to you before, it has to be financially uh, feasible. Yeah, there's a lot of different aspects to it. Mm-hmm. And I love when that happens. Like you mentioned that you, that particular idea that you first thought of on a plane and it wasn't fully finished, but right. it came to you later. Is there because any... it was necessary in the car too. It was necessary mm-hmm. in the car too. So moments like that, when you have those aha moments, is there typically something you're doing that when those moments really click, like something you're up to at the time? Yes. Usually, it, all right, so I'm coming here today. I'm very, very inspired. Usually inventions mm-hmm. come when you're inspired, right? You listen to the radio or you're in the shower. Like I, that's typically where my inventions come in the shower. That's yeah. the space. That's the space on the beach when I'm flying because you have time to think. So that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. having time to think. I'm not working with a client at the moment. I'm just mm-hmm. in my own space. I don't have the radio on all the time. I just think. And that's when, that's when they come. Yeah. And sometimes it's just separating from your phone for a little bit or Mm -hmm. just going out for a walk. Uh, I mean, it's amazing just going for like a 10, 15 minute walk outside with no distractions and you're just looking around at the buildings or trees, whatever's around you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just really makes things click. I know you have an invention. I can see it. I'm probably, probably give me like five, 10 minutes when something will come up soon. I can see it. (laughs) I can see the wheels I I appreciate it. We'll have to uh, be in touch on that. I'll let you know. Next time I'm in the shower or a car ride, it will click maybe on the ride back today. <laughs> but uh, I know that you have to run in a little bit. So I just want to wrap up with a couple more quicker segments. Sure. So first one is the wild business shout out of the week. The wild business shout out of the week. Cool. Nice. Thank you. I love that's, it. That's a great compliment. <laughs> but wild business shout out of the week. This is where we talk about a recent campaign or product or invention that caught our attention. And there was something you mentioned about cinches. Am mm-hmm. I saying that correctly? Yeah. Um, big cinch expert. It's, it's oh. a, <laughs> <laughs> Can you walk it's, us through it? It's um, Yeah. So it's called cinch clasp. So a cinch clasp is was invented by this lovely lady, uh, Maria Gibbs, who's now my client. It's a clasp that goes on any necklace to make it easier to clasp your necklace. Typically, you have like lobster claws in the back and, and or in the front, and you just, you're, you're most of us women. I have nails and can't put it all together. This lady invented this clasp that is a little, it's literally like a one, two, put it on and go. And you could put this thing on all of your necklaces, ankle bracelets, and it's just phenomenal, phenomenal. So cinch clasp. Hmm. And she does have a website. I just, uh, again, I launched her. Well, she'll be launching on Evine Live. If you don't know what Evine Live is, it used to be Shop NBC. It's another one of the top three shopping networks in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just pitched her to Evine. They're picking it up and we'll be launching soon with this product. Well, congrats. Early congrats to that. Thank you. So what is it about the product that stuck out to you the most and that you like so much about it? It just made sense. I travel a whole lot Mm -hmm. and I wear a lot of jewelry. It eliminates me getting off the elevator and asking a stranger to buckle my necklace, to clip my necklace. My husband wasn't too happy about the fact that I was asking strangers to clasp 
my necklace. Oh, you so, got a so, reputation? Yeah, like, I got a reputation. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, it really helps me. I mean, it edits for everyone. It's a product. It's got, you know, her, even her website is phenomenal. She does giveaways. She's very smart. Her mm-hmm. marketing strategies are phenomenal. Um, so you can go to her website, cinchclasp.com. Perfect. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that product, it just makes a lot of sense. It's something that now that it's around, you kind of have that thought of, oh, like, why didn't I think of that? Or that, I mean, in your case, it's a little different. No, but that really is case, but like, a why didn't I think of that? That's a really, right. I'm glad she thought of it. Which I feel like is a good indication of a, a really strong product and invention is mm-hmm. when it just, it's such a natural, like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. We could see using it. I mean, there's so many out there. So th- those are some of the best ones. So only a little bit of time left. Love to wrap up with some rapid fire Q&A. Sure. You ready for it? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get wild. What Ooh. is, <laughs> yeah, we need a little, uh, we, we need some of the opening theme music from your, the walkout music from your conference. Mm-hmm. But what would you say if you, and it can be yours or it could be something you just come across every day. What is your favorite invention of all time? Probably an easy one for you, right? Oh, my favorite invention. (laughs) Jeez. Okay, my favorite invention of all times is usually what I'm inventing in the moment. So I'm going to say my Luggies bow. Yeah, and what is that one? So the Luggies bow happens to be mine, and it's a bow that you tie around your luggage to identify when your luggage is coming off of the conveyor belt. Hmm. Everybody's luggage is black. Uh, So I developed these uh, bows that have... An ID tag in the bow. You have to, I, I have one from the car. I should have brought it in. Oh, um, <laughs> you're yeah. a woman of your inventions. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's awesome. It's, you know, you're seen immediately. Your luggage is seen immediately. You mm-hmm. grab it and you go. So Luggies Bow. L-U-G-E-Z-B-O-W. Luggies Bow. Put a Luggies bow on bow. it. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, very good. Thank you. Yeah. I, like I, I get one every now and then. That's my slogan now. That's it. Take you've it. Met, taken it. You've <laughs> met all, if not all, most of the sharks, the famous sharks or infamous sharks mm-hmm. on TV. I know you're probably not intimidated by anyone, but if you had to say which of these sharks is the most in- intimidating and you think would be most difficult to pitch to, who would you say? Oh my gosh. And I they're all listening say, right now. So. I have to say, they were all so nice in the beginning. I thought Mr. Wonderful would be the most intimidating. Yeah. Uh, but he was the easiest guy to speak with. He really? He was great. He, we spent <laughs> a lot of time together. There was an after party on the rooftop in Hollywood and in Beverly Hills, actually. And it was just amazing to speak with him. He was easy. Mark is amazing, kind, genuine. It's so different, you know, from watching them on television to being up close and yeah. personal, just having these personal conversations. So you met the real Mr. Wonderful. I met like, the real Mr. Wonderful. Not the ironic nickname, the real nickname. Nope. That's that's so funny to hear. What is your favorite beach around here in New okay, Jersey? So I go to well, Long Branch. It's it's Pier Village. I love. I love mm-hmm. Pier Village. It gets a little crowded, but if you want to go shopping, have some great eats, that's the spot. That's the spot. Real <laughs> scary. Bring a lot of money. And when we first connected, you were at the beach today. So yes. you you frequent beach, I mean wonderful beaches around here. And then last question, what is your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. <laughs> oh man, I think I have a few. You can do a few My biggest if you want. pet peeve. Okay, I don't like people chewing loud. <laughs> Good thing I wasn't chewing loud. Yep. <laughs> the whole crunching thing, eating with your mouth open. Yeah, I uh, get but that. But getting back into the inventing world, I would have to say, I don't think this is a pet peeve. It it, it bothers me when people are not confident in what they're doing. Just stand up and be confident in what you're doing. Speak your truth. Speak things into existence. Don't beat yourself up. My biggest pet peeve is when people beat themselves up. They really, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it bothers me, but that's a, I think that, that's a psychotherapy thing. Because <laughs> there are of reasons course. for it. Yeah, so in business, I just don't like when people get down on themselves. When you know, right. just just you got to surround yourself with right. positive people. Especially, yeah, when you see somebody that has so much potential, but they're not, they're just not capturing it. They're not, they're not. using it. So mm-hmm. I'm sure you come across that all the time. So, Lisa, thank you so much. This has been amazing. The Inventress, thank you so much for hosting, for having us here, and for coming on the podcast, sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me. This was spectacular. Where's the best place for people to connect with you and your businesses? What do you want to shout out for a call out there? Sure. So you can go to inventingatoz.com. That's my website. 
email info at inventingatoz.com. If you want to check out AOE, A-O-W-I-E dot com. So the websites are interconnected. You buy one, you'll get the other. Mm-hmm. Just like I've my business I've seen this cards. from experience, yes. Kill two birds with one stone. I like it. And final thoughts here to send us out. It could be a quote. It could mm-hmm. be a line, whatever you want. It could be, you know, your walkout music, <laughs> whatever you want to send us off here. You should be playing my video. I mean, when I walked in, I didn't see my video playing. I didn't hear my music. <laughs> this, this is hard I for know. Me. I should have started beatboxing in the background or something. No, yeah. so for me, it's always about kindness. So when you go out there, go out and lift people up two hands at a time and sometimes you may just have to use your foot so do it hands feet whatever it takes thank you so much lisa for coming on the podcast and hosting at that amazing office down the shore and thank you wild listeners for tuning in to another episode if you're not already which i'm sure is because you're off busy getting the podcast logo tattooed on your arm make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite app and leave us a five-star review on apple Podcasts. You can also absorb our marketing and business growth insights at hippodirect.com slash blog and hippodirect.com slash newsletter. That newsletter is the Hippo Digest, and it's your weekly recap of creative marketing from all around the web. And come say, how's it hanging? That's the only thing we respond to on your favorite social media app at the handles Hippo Direct and Max Brandstetter. Oh, oh, and what about that podcast scheduling update I mentioned at the start of the episode? So, my spectacular girlfriend, Dana, and I are going on a Euro trip, a little case of Euro trip-itis, and because of that, next week there will not be a new episode. But fear not, as the next week we will be back. It will be a little later in the week, though, that episode will release on Friday instead of Wednesday. So, in summary, Euro trip-itis, no new episode next week, but the following week we're releasing on Friday instead of Wednesday. And then after that, back to our normal Wild Business Growth Wednesday schedule every single week. Of course, during the off week, it is a fantastic time to go back and look at any of the episodes you missed. In fact, as part of our Hippo Digest newsletter next week, we are revealing the top most downloaded episodes of all time, Wild Business Growth Podcast history. You don't want to miss it. You can sign up at hippodirect.com slash newsletter. You can check back on any of those top episodes you may have missed along the way. That's the dealio. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos! Bongos!